Hey, what's up church? Hey, this is your boy Shane and I'm so excited about tonight. Just want to say welcome to the movement online. Uh, tonight, Molly Billings is going to speak to you. So excited about um, her sharing uh, what she's going to share in our part four of our Fix It Jesus series. Also, remember, our Zoom rooms begin at 7.15. You will need to register on the link below. Go ahead and copy that or write it down and sign up for our Zoom rooms. Remember that that goes down at 7.15. So it is our place that we gather together in community virtually uh, because we can't be face to face. And right now I'm about four feet. Hold up six feet apart from you. So I hope you guys have had a great day. Excited and pumped about tonight. You guys buckle up, strap it up, get ready for the movement. What's up TV Lamp? This is your boy Dollar Bill. Welcome to Craft Time with Dollar. And uh, so today's craft is going to be for you and for your mamas um, because you guys are at home all the time. Uh, you know you be eating up all the food in the house, the cereals and all the bologna, you know, and, and uh, Mother's Day is a few weeks away. Uh, and so, so here we go. This is what we're going to do. So you take a red sheet of paper like this, fold that jugger in half. And make it in half, so then it's like, bam, bam, spread out. And then what you do is, you start on the corner side, okay? So we'll say we'll start on the corner side here, and you're going to come up. Now, some of y'all, y'all know what I'm doing. You just don't do it like like dollar does so this what should be done this is, should be the leftover you cut it with some scissors or if you have a, a knife you can cut it with your knife and bam look at it a big old fat heart and so that's what mama's like and then what you do is you write a little something for your mama and inside And then, bam, says, I love you, Dollar Bill, by Dollar Bill. So, hope this makes a smile to your mama's face. Hope you guys have learned something today. And, yeah, craft time with the, your boy, Dollar Bill, making some heart crafts. Peace. Good afternoon, Warren Grove Town students. Hope you guys are having a great week so far, and welcome to the movement online. You are in for a treat today. We've got Molly coming to you in just a minute, who's going to bring the message, and it's going to be awesome. We're in the middle of a series called Fix It Jesus, and today we're going to be in Mark chapter 8, starting with verse 22. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Mark chapter 8, verse 22. It's an amazing story about how Jesus healed a blind man, and what's cool in this series of Fix It Jesus is sometimes we feel like these miracles that people back then or even us right now would just say, Jesus, just fix this. Fix something quick. We want it on our timetable. And what's interesting is, is that Jesus was not just about fixing the physical problem and moving on. He also wanted to fix the heart. And he wanted to be intentional about the process of faith as it relates to the people that he was helping and healing. Same thing he wants to do with us today. He wants to do an amazing work in your life and in your heart. He wants to fix not only your physical needs, and sometimes he'll certainly do that, but he more importantly wants to fix your heart and your mind and wants you to fully follow after him in all that you say and do. So we're so excited again that you're joining us this afternoon. Uh, look forward to what Molly's going to say. I appreciate her hard work and uh, all that she does and, and what Shane does with our student ministry. And uh, we appreciate you too. We miss you. We love you. See you soon. God bless. Hi friends and welcome to the movement. I am here at the Augusta campus sitting outside at the pavilion. Um, it is a little bit windy so I do apologize. Um, but today I get to play a little bit of a different role in the movement and the fact that I get to bring you the message. So we're going to be continuing our series called Fix It Jesus where we're looking at the different miracles that Jesus performed while he was here on earth. Um, so today we're going to be looking at when Jesus healed the blind man.
which he healed a few, but in particular, we're going to be in Mark chapter 8 and starting in verse 22. So go ahead and grab your Bibles if you have one um, and flip open to Mark chapter 8 and we'll get started. 22. And they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. And he sent him to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. So at first glance, it kind of looked like this miracle was just like all the other miracles. But if we look at a little bit deeper, it's a little bit odd in the fact that it seemed to not work at first. When Jesus laid his hands on the blind man for the first time, it didn't seem to work. So we're just going to take it verse by verse and dig a little bit deeper. So verse 22 says, They came to Bethsaida. And some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. So we don't really know who these people are. They could be people from the town or they could be family members. We don't really know. But what we do know is that Jesus started to begin um, gaining a little bit of popularity. So people wanted to see firsthand what Jesus was doing. Um, so we don't really know their motives. So continuing verse 23. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? So Jesus intentionally took this man outside of the busy village to spend, to be alone with him. He intentionally sought to be alone with this man. Our world is busy and full of distractions, um, but when we're completely alone with God, he's able to stretch and grow our faith. And that's what we're going to see with this man. Continuing, it says that he spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him. He asked, do you see anything? Verse 24. And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. So this is where we kind of get a little confused of why did it not work at first? He saw people, but they looked like trees walking. It kind of seems a little odd, but we know that Jesus is all powerful. He's all knowing. He holds the world by his very breath, he can do things how he wants to do things. And in this instance, I think he was teaching us a lesson. Um, so they were intentional and they had purpose. And I think the purpose of it was to grow the faith of this blind man. At first it didn't really work, but then he was being, but he was being cared for by someone who intimately knew him and was patiently growing his faith. We know that Jesus isn't only a miracle worker, but he's also our savior. So continuing on in verse 25, it says, Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Verse 26, And he sent him to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. So what's happening here? Christ's compassion was laid upon this man, and he restored his sight fully. Jesus' desire was to grow this man's faith. And I think this is a parallel to our own lives where Jesus is desiring to grow our faith in him. God is aware of what needs to happen in order to grow our faith. And he knows our needs and he meets us where we're at. So here's the bottom line. First, Jesus rightly commands us to come to him in faith trusting in his power, his might, his goodness, his love, his grace, his mercy. And we have to believe in him and worship him. Whether that results in a miracle of being healed from being blind to being to be able to see, or if it's just simply like seeing the grace of God in our lives and the goodness of God in our lives. Finally, we need to remember that physical healing and spiritual healing aren't often instantaneous. A lot of times it's a process and it takes time, but we have to hold tightly to Jesus knowing that he's the author and the perfecter of our faith, that he meets our needs, he meets us where we're at, um, and oftentimes the answers to our prayers may come quickly, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they take time or they often come in stages where Jesus answers prayers slowly but surely. But regardless of all of this, we need to realize that God's grace is sufficient enough in our own lives. So I hope this is encouraging to you.
time today. Um, I do miss you guys, and I really do hope for the day that we get to see each other again. What's up? Hey, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, remember, Zoom rooms at 715. I uh, hope you guys have I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God will continue moving in your life and your heart. Hopefully, I'll see you in just a little bit. 715, Zoom rooms. Peace.